How's it going guys? Thanks for tuning into the Move OTX channel of gear reviews once more today. And in today's review we are taking a close look here, still focusing on my iPhone 5C, but we're taking a close look at the life proof free case, uh, water submersible case for the iPhone 5C. Now I'm just going to just go right here and review the screen for the optical quality and the screen touch quality and transition over into the second half of my review with the screen off because what happens is the camera there the light sensor array and the camera uh, focuses on the screen brightness and my entire review looks black basically so I've had to record this twice now third time here finally figured out what's going on so anyhow dive right into it we're gonna take a look at the screen first and I'll dim the screen as I, as I mentioned so here's your screen quality um, I've had no problems with the capacitive touch screen and maintaining touch with the screen protector cover that's on there. Um, now for some reason, and I'm not sure if my camera will pick this up, but the screen protector on the Life Proof Free is very loose and like baggy and I don't know why that's the case because my wife's OtterBox has a very smooth, flat, snug fitting screen protector. but. Um, that being said, I haven't had any problems with maintaining touch or, any, or feel or anything like that uh, on the screen whatsoever. So um, what you're looking at here is the maximized brightness here on my screen. And this, the, the optical quality is very good. I haven't had any problems with like rainbowing or distortions or blurriness or blur or anything like that looking through the, screen, through the optical quality of it. Um, it does tend to be like a lint magnet static electric charge builds up kind of on the surface of it and I have to wipe off the dust and debris and stuff like that every once in a while but that's kind of a minor issue I think the big the biggest problem though is is if you're going straight from the the bare glass and you're used to feel feeling that and you put this cheap flimsy plastic sheet over it it's kind of loose it just feels really cheap basically so I kind of forgive it um, even though it is kind of annoying quite honestly but it works it holds out water keeps that water um, and again, this, it, the function of the screen is perfectly fine. I can touch and tap whatever I want, slide things around. Um, it's just the feel of it that's kind of eh, wah, wah, kind of da thumbs down a little bit for that. So, at any rate, let's dim the screen. I'm just going to turn it off completely, and we'll talk about the physical properties of the case. So, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Here, we've got to dig up the box. I'm not going to go too much detail about the box. Just the key points here. Make sure you get the case for the iPhone 5C. Okay, because the 5C and the 5S and the iPhone 5 are all different sizes. And you can't put a 5C phone into a 5 case, basically. So make sure they match. Second thing, you're going to want to make sure you're buying an authentic original, not a counterfeit or a fake or a clone. And from the box, my understanding, one of the easiest ways to tell is for the registered trademark, the R in the circle logo, after the words life proof. It shows up a couple places, like around the outside of the box. I hope you can kind of see that there. So look for the registered trademark logo. And that's all I'm going to say about the box. A lot of excellent, excellent YouTube reviewers have reviewed out of box. Put the box away. That's not the topic here for this review. So going back to the case itself, um... It's basically like a clamshell bottom and a Tupperware lid. Top Tupperware, basically. Think Tupperware with a really, really tight-fitting lid. So um, you drop the phone. And again, lots of excellent reviews out there. You basically pull the clamshell, pull the top apart, and you slide the phone into the case, and you snap it around the perimeter. Okay, so the back side of the case obviously is clear, and you can see through that. And the cool thing about it is you can actually see that gray gasket, silicone gasket O-ring going around the perimeter. You can see that squish and squish and compress flat. Um, let me zoom out a little bit. Zoom out a little bit there. And you can see it compress flat when you press the case halves together. And I think that's the reason why they made it clear is, number one, you can see that gasket interaction. Okay, you can inspect for dirt, debris, gunk that might disrupt the water seal. Um, you can check it visually for gasket compression there. Um, but also you can check for moisture intrusion. Okay, so if you see fogging or moisture building up or fogging inside there, you know your case is not really water tight. Okay, you're going to want to take it out, clean the gasket tracks, make sure everything's clean and ready to go. Um, alternately, 
Alternately, register your serial number and pursue warranty service from LifeProof. Okay, so um, that's pretty much that. Now, I taught, I mentioned it being like a Tupperware lid, and that's not really exactly the best way to word it because Tupperware you can take on and off, on and off repeatedly. Okay, so this case half snaps together really pretty tight. Okay, and it's not like an um, GoPro camera case with a hinge and a clasp on it where you just hinge and unhinge, open and close, open and close. No, I don't believe that's the intended philosophy of use for this case. The free case that you see here is intended to put the phone in, snap it in, seal out the water, and basically just leave it in there as long as you have the phone. Okay, so, um, and I suspect, okay, you could, because it's just plastic and really tight-fitting parts, if you're just taking it on and off, taking it on and off, I suspect you could somehow lower or degrade slightly the retention and the forces involved to keep these pieces snug and tight fitting together. So my particular case you're seeing here has been, I don't know, I opened it and closed it maybe two or three times and I'm good enough, good to go through. So um, there's a pretty lengthy pre-test, water submersion pre-test that you need to do, to do with the case. And so that basically is take the case out of the box, kind of clean it out, make sure there's no dust or anything in it, load like a piece of paper in it, snap it shut, lock it up tight and then drop it into a bucket of water for like 40 minutes or so and then take it out and inspect for water leaks and that's kind of like the pretest procedure there's actually some really good YouTube videos for that being done as well but once your case passes the pretest then you're ready to load up your phone and your hunky dory you're good to go so I did I did all that no problems there totally uneventful my case is shallow water submersible so it is the dead of winter right now I honestly have not had a chance to take it into the pool yet um, I have gotten it wet a bunch of times, a few times. Of course, I dunked it in a bucket of water, no big deal. Just held it into the shower a little bit just to see how that would do, and it totally, totally did, did fine. So um, I have originally bought this case with the intention to, like, a seasonal type of thing. You know, put it during the summer months when I'm outdoors near the water, put it in this case, and then transition in the fall and the winter to... Um, like the smaller rubber clear apple, uh, rubber stretch on apple case um, that they re semi recently released. But to be honest with you, the overall functionality of the phone is totally works fine. I haven't needed or cared really to swap back and forth uh, for case one case to the, one case to the other. So, um, so there you go. There's your camera lens looking through the front there. Uh, the camera lens as well as the little LED flashlight and the camera flash is totally unobstructed. It works totally fine. No problems there at all. Um, likewise, so are the volume buttons and the mute switch slider. That totally works fine as well. Okay, so as, as well as the main, I guess what, power on and off switch there. Just push, push it on and off. No problems there. Okay, so I'm not sure if you guys can see this. I hope you can. So let's go with this. I'll, I'll just leave the lighting the way it is. Okay, so to seal out water, you simply unscrew the headphone plug cork, basically. And it's a screw-on little contraption here. In fact, I'm going to turn my camera light back on. There. And screw the, the uh, plug here. It's got a, the yellow is a silicone O-ring gasket, and it threads right into the screw fastener there. And this plug here, along with that yellow silicone gasket, is what seals out water, okay? when you're not using the headphone jack. So, they had the forethought to include this little um, adapter piece. I've seen these like on Amazon for, I don't know, as cheap as like 10 bucks for three of them, a set of three. So, um, I guess that is that is what it is. So, if you want to retain the completely watertight seal, you have to use this adapter with your headphones and you simply screw that in so it's snug. And now you've got, of course, a little headphone jack here to use whichever uh, headphones or earphones that you want. So, um, kind of a pain, kind of cumbersome to have to drag this around in my pack, you know, with my son and his Weebelow Scouts going around trekking, you know, in our in our, in our daily our, our scouting routine, our scouting tasks. But um, honestly, I don't really use this that much. Okay, so a perfectly good, I think, workaround is just simply to take the OEM Apple uh, headphone jack and it just plugs right into the bottom like that. Now obviously this corner of the case loses its water resistance seal but for just daily use around the house, around town, just living with the phone on a daily basis, I got the headphone, I'll have the headphones coiled up in my pocket or whatever, this is perfectly good enough. Um, and I think this is a really well thought out design um, for 
to keep that water for security, the robustness of it all. It's it's really really well thought out, I think. So, um, also along those lines, there is your port opening for the lightning connector, the dock there, and it's a pretty large size opening. So you saw me unplug it earlier. Where did it go? You saw me unplug it earlier. Um, I use both the Apple OEM lightning connector and I also use uh, the AT&T store brand and it totally fits without any obstructions or problems there. Okay, so I guess it would take a fairly large um, lightning connector, um, aftermarket lightning connector to be too big to fit into that hole there. So, um, like the headphone jack port, the Lightning Connector has this yellow silicone o-ring gasket material here. You're going to want to make sure that is clean, dry, and clear of lint as best you can to, before you close that little hatch door. So, the other thing I want to make a note of too is this entire base of the phone, the case here, just it just it gets wet. I mean, you dunk it in the water, everything gets wet. So, if your phone is still wet and you unscrew the headphone plug or you open the trap door, you're inviting moisture to get in there. So if water happens to just kind of drip onto the door here or get, or seep into stuff and you close it and you close it back up, you're locking moisture back inside your case. So you're going to want to, if your phone is wet, you're going to want to make sure, you know, shake it out, dry it out as you can, blot it with like a, you know, a t-shirt or paper towel or something, blot it as best you can, get all that, as much of that water off of there as you can before you close it back up. Okay, same goes with water submersible cameras, anything that's rated for use, any electronic device rated for use, submersed, you're going to want to make sure when you close your trap doors that everything is dry and good to go before you close it back up. So, um, on that note, this little, this little doohickey here is my own little contraption that I added to it um, to keep the cases closed. Okay, so I showed you how you snap it together. To take the case apart, you simply use this little notch here, this groove here, and you stick a penny in there and pry it open. Okay, so it comes apart fairly easily. It's somewhat easily. I mean, you just stick your finger in there and pull it, and, the whole, and it just basically this corner can come undone. So, knowing well ahead of time, my intended POU, okay, ten, intended philosophy of use is a pocket carry, pack carry t piece of tech gear that I can just stow away and not worry about it. I don't want to have any chance of something getting in there and pulling on it or whatever. So, I fabricated this metal clip um, using binder clip. A piece of binder clip and some tin snips and a Dremel and I basically fabricated this U-shape, U-channel shape piece here and just clamps right over the back here and it just holds the entire assembly together so it can't come apart. And you can actually see, again, going back to the same theme, you can actually see that gray silicone owning gasket there squished and compressed against that clear backing and some scratches there too from the metal but that's the way it is. So good to go. No problems. No problems there at all. So, um... Let's see, a lot of complaints on Amazon about audio quality, sound quality through the earpiece, microphone quality, spoken quality through the microphone, and I've had no such problems at all with this phone. Um, a lot of those Amazon reviewers, if you read into them carefully towards the very, I don't know, bottom-ish of the reviews, there are cases of counterfeit products um, from LifeProof being forged, faked and counterfeited, cloned, whatever you want to call it and sold on YouTube and Amazon seller partners and things like that. So, got to take some of those reviews with a grain of salt. Personally, you know, I bought mine from Best Buy. They are an authorized seller for LifeProof products. I have had no problems with audio quality. I ask everybody I call, hey, do you, can you hear me? Is my audio good? Am I muffled? I've had zero complaints. My only complaint was my sister-in-law, but she's hearing impaired and has some uh, hearing damage in her old age anyways, so she's kind of a moot uh, data point. So, um, I think the one thing I like about the phone over the case overall is it really just doesn't bloat out the overall dimensions of the case. It's still um, a smallish device. I can hold it in my hand. I can use it with my thumb, navigate around the screen. You saw me zipping around the screen earlier. Touch capacity totally, totally works fine. So compared to like the Griffin Survivor cases, which are just big and bulky and super robust for drop impact. For me, eh, as a pocketable tool, I want something smaller, and for me, the lightproof free case totally delivers kind of with that uh, with that in mind as well. So, um, overall, I'm really happy with the case. 
I intend to keep my iPhone for you know at least two years on my contract plan, and I have no plans to up, upgrade or update that. So um, I'm good to go. Summer's right around the corner here. It's you know summer's right around the corner. Spring's right around the corner. You might see me post some follow-up reviews as a water submersible camera uh, device, and we're good to go with that. So anyhow, just wanted to take this moment here to review the life-proof free case for the Apple iPhone 5C. So thanks a lot guys for sitting through this and I will catch you later.